So, I finally stepped into the 17th century and acquired a bandsaw. It's the Harbor Freight Special. Uh, man, I should have bought one of these a long time ago. This thing makes uh, cutting up metal so much easier than trying to mill it out on the machine. Even though I had a lot of problems with this bandsaw when I first got it, uh, with aligning the blade and the blade broke, I actually took the broken blade back today and exchanged it out for another one. Uh, and then just weird things like it, the, the blade wouldn't cut straight up and down, and even though I trammed everything perfectly, I don't know. Anyway, it's uh, definitely a worthwhile addition for sure. But uh, here we are on our second installment of the uh, dice manufacturing. The uh, first one was just some test cuts in aluminum. This is actually titanium that I ended up getting um, from, I believe this also, I believe all of this stuff comes from uh, General Electric, from their aircraft engine manufacturing. So I believe this is all grade five or six. And I only say six because some of them had the letters SM engraved on them for some kind of tin addition to the alloy. Um, anyway, what I'm doing is, uh, this is also kind of a prototype test. I'm just, I just want to machine a pair of them just to see how it goes. Because I never cut titanium before and man, this is a, this is a very difficult metal to machine for sure. You gotta mainly I think it's because you gotta run the spindle speed so slow. It requires such a low surface speed per minute. But you know, it's not terrible, but uh, it definitely sucks. <laughs> Especially this stuff. This stuff is really hard. It seems it seems quite a bit harder than the um, heat treated 4140 steel that I've machined before, and it's kind of gummy, so it leaves a huge burr every time you try to machine it. But Basically I cut it into a few cubes and I'm now machining it with a face mill uh, down to 16 millimeter. And I have all six flutes in the face mill right now. So it's it's actually cutting at a pretty good clip right, right at the moment. Um, and that was good even though I was only machining uh, just a pair of dice and I was machining them individually because they weren't square and I was trying to squ square up the uh, pieces on the vise and you can only really do that on one piece at a time because it won't unless the dimensions are exactly the same it won't uh, hold two pieces properly and one of them will come out but as you can see there with my micrometer I got pretty close I mean I don't think you can get much closer than that and that's straight off the machine so I also wanted to do um, some a little bit of corner rounding on the edges not a whole lot but just because it's metal you know it could be actually kind of hazardous if you leave those sharp corners on there um, you know if you roll and dice and you hit somebody with them or something man it could really cut so I'm putting a slight uh, radius on all the edges and I actually um, spent a lot of time working on the corners the, the edges were easy the corners were difficult because I wanted to get these dice perfectly symmetrical on all sides so they're, they're balanced so no matter what side you look at them from they're exactly the same as every other side and uh, if you'll notice I forgot to turn the coolant on here um, so it took a, a while of programming just to get, you know, everything uh, right geometrically to make sure that when that uh, radius cutter hits those corners, you know, it's going to be the same and, and perfectly symmetrical. So here I am machining the pips with an eighth-inch ball mill. Um, now another thing about precision machine dice is they need to be perfectly balanced. So you can't have more material removed from one face than another face. So what I did was uh, a little bit of math and, a, and some programming to uh, determine the exact amount of material to remove from each face. 
So as you increase the number of pips on a face, you're actually removing less material um, per pip. But the total re material removed from any given face is exactly the same. And I do that by varying the depth um, of, the, of the mill very precisely. These are also right-handed dice. I had to do a little bit of research about dice chirality. Excuse me, which is um, the way the the pips are oriented. And there's the first ones off the mill. I didn't do anything to these except run them on a little buffing wheel, just to kind of give them a little polish. But you can still kind of see the machine marks from the face mill and everything. You can't really feel it, but you can kind of see it. It's you know, sort of like a hologram. Or something. So, a much quicker way to do it is to machine these out of bar stock, and I don't have any, so the chunks I had, I kind of bandsawed them into uh, kind of short bars, and I'm trying to machine them down to size here, and this is a much quicker way to do, do it, do things by using a smaller end mill. So this is a half inch end mill instead of that big uh, three or three inch end mill or three inch face mill. I'm sorry. Uh, so I can run the spindle speed quicker, and I can um, machine it, m remove more material faster. So these are these are the most aggressive cuts I've taken to date with the new motor. And even though they're not very aggressive, um, I'm just kind of ramping up to it and, until I hit my comfort zone because I do not want to break anything else at this point. Now that the machine is working. Um, I even get nervous sometimes turning it on because I'm afraid so one day it's not going to turn on and I'm not going to know why and I'm going to have to mess with it to figure it out. But uh, anyway, it cuts quite nicely and it removes a good amount of material. The depth of cut here is I believe 0.1 inches. This is a roughing end mill, so it's pretty tough. Now you'll want to stay tuned for the end of the video where I take the most aggressive cut I've ever taken on the machine with this end mill, just to see how the new motor will handle it. So that's kind of exciting. Not really, but kind of. So I'm trying to hold tolerances on these things as tight as I can because apparently gamers who are serious about their dice um, really want precision dice that are balanced. And if anything is out of uh, tolerance or anything like that, they'll be weighted differently and they'll produce a different result. Um, yeah, so what I'm doing here, in an effort to achieve a better surface finish, I'm using my face mill as a fly cutter, and I've taken all but one insert out. So there's only one insert impacting the material, so I have to take it really slow, unfortunately. But the uh, the gain in surface finish is is pretty clutch, and you'll see here in a minute. Now, really, what I need to do is get a smaller diameter insert. Uh, probably an end mill, probably like a 0.75 or a 1 inch end mill, two insert cutter, and just only put one of them in there. I should be able to go quite a bit quicker. But that is just a beautiful surface finish. I mean, it's like a CD or something. Using just the one insert. So, with that, here we are with the aggressive cut. It's uh, 0.2 inches deep, 70% step over with that uh, half inch end mill. This thing, this cut, took a lot of power, I could tell. 
and I unfortunately didn't look at the load meter while I was cutting because I was just waiting for the something to explode on my machine and I had my eyes glued to the cutter but uh, on some of the other cuts that I thought were aggressive the uh, load only went up uh, just a few percentage points and the spindle motor showed absolutely no signs of bogging down or, or uh, being under load in any way. I mean, you can tell by the sound of the cut. It's 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 a pretty aggressive cut, but the motor just handled it beautifully. And I'm just doing these facing operations with the end mill by hand because each piece I put on there is a different size. So rather than go through the trouble of trying to program something, I can just quickly buzz off the surface uh, down to approximately the right depth with an end mill. Um, using the keyboard and then I can go back and just kind of do the last facing pass with that um, face mill. So from here they go back to the bandsaw uh, to get cut into individual cubes and hopefully I'll be able to hold all of them in the vise at once because I machined them all at once. But we'll see. I haven't gotten that far yet. That will probably be in the next video. These are going to be a pretty limited run item, I think, just because they take so much time and effort to do correctly. And they don't really harness the power of CNC because there's so many manual operations. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next video.